Who's tried Platinum Plus? Everybody. Who loves Platinum Plus? <laughs> All right, we got two up front. The rest of you go home. <laughs> All right. I'll be honest with you. Platinum Plus is a uh, hybrid alloy. All right. The ones that are, are you casting it or doing the SLM or DPM? Casting it. When you cast it, uh, some of the, the things that are most important is preheating the crucible. Uh, your torch tip, uh, you, you hold the torch close. And when you have it close, it's an inch and a half to two inches, you're in a reduction flame. If you have it too far back, what happens is you're putting oxygen in it. So if you're having issues with uh, uh, a very dark oxide on the metal when you get it out, that could be just from that, having too much oxide. Uh, torch tip too far back and you're going to put oxygen into the metal, which makes it, it actually it'll be darker and it's harder to cast. When you have it right down on it, it casts literally 10 to 15 seconds is what it takes. You saw how long that video was, and that's all it is. It's just the torch is right down on it, and it melts very quickly. Now what we have is uh, some people can cast it fine. Single units are easy for them. Bridges, they start having problems. Well, the metal actually doesn't know if it's going on a bridge or a single. Uh, so it's more of a mindset getting used to it. Um, when you cast it, you want to make sure that the, the majority of the ingots are not stacked on top of each other. If they are, that's OK. Sometimes when you're casting a big case, you have to. Okay. Preheat the crucible for at least 15 minutes. Having your, um, oh, you want to shut it off? Or? No. Okay. Um, having your uh, your crucible preheated without the metal. If you, we got it. All right. That doesn't show you much, but. I'll right, give you something to look at. Um, <laughs> it's a crosscut carbide. That's what I use to finish it. So when, when you cast it, you keep the torch down. And when it slumps, and it doesn't, if you're trying to get it to pull, I was at a, uh, a lab a couple days ago. He says, well, when it, when it slumps, I'm shaking it. You don't want to shake it. When it slumps, it slumps. You don't shake it. When you shake it, you're actually producing more of an oxide. You get a layer, and the more you shake it, heat and air is what produces oxide. So if you're shaking it, you're producing more oxide because you're putting more metal out into the air. So when it slumps, move your torch around. Make sure, as you saw in that little quick video, which is online, it's YouTube, Casting Platinum Plus. Um, you'll see when it slumps, you let it go. Now, the one thing I didn't do in this video that I will fix when I get back um, is actually show you how the units come out of the investment. Now, one of the big things that you have is your investment. Um, we recommend 1598. I don't know how we came up with that uh, number, but anywhere from 15 to 1600 is usually good to have your ring. Now, rapid firing investments uh, affect how it is. Now, your liquid water ratio is more of a non-precious. Even though it's considered a noble metal, the liquid water ratio is more of a non-precious. Now, a lot of times with rapid fire, um, that people are saying you can do it in 40 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever. You may be able to do that, but you want to, the, the best results you're going to get is at high temperature for an hour. Your castings will come out nice and smooth. If you're getting your castings are coming out rough, almost like sandpaper, that's gassing from your investment. Now, 
you can actually end up with uh, little carbon deposits and what have you if when you're reusing the button, you don't take the slag off the bottom. If you don't take the slag off the bottom, then you're actually putting that slag in. It looks like carbon, it's, it's burnt metal for a better source. If in your crucible you get a heavy dark oxide, you're overheating it. When you take this out, I use, uh, I do a program, it's called the, I think you've seen this, Jeff, the one that's the lab-induced headaches. Number one lab-induced headache is people divest with a hammer. Why is that? Divesting with a hammer is about the same as putting your coping up to the sheetrock and trying to knock it through the other side. Something's going to give whether it's the, the coping, flexes, or cracks, or bridge warps. Um, with your investment, um, you want to make sure that, that you're using the uh, non-precious settings, and you check it. Now, the one thing that I've seen with this metal, and I've actually had more comments on this, is tight fits because they're using the liquid water ratio for a noble. Well, even with the noble, they say they've gone on to straight uh, inve investment liquid. And when you go straight liquid, that's as loose as you're going to get. Weigh your packs of investment. It doesn't matter what brand you're using. If you're using a 60 gram bag, if you're using a 90 or 100, weigh them. Uh, we did ours and uh, we're having issues with our DPM. Some people were saying that they were tight, loose, whatever. I took five bags, laid them up there, and weighed it out of one box. One, one bag was 10 grams off. You get 10 grams too heavy. So when you mix it, it's a little thick. Your, your shrinkage rate will not be the same. So your fit won't be right, okay? Now, with this metal, I've actually, when our beta labs that were testing it, I had one call me up and ask me if they could do bridges. The reason is because it was so soft. They had the casting down pretty good. If, that's another thing, if, if you're grinding on it, it's very hard, you may be overheating it. Jeff, how are you guys doing on that? That's what I talked about. My guess is telling me he's overheating it because he's trying to. My guess tells me he's trying to get me to do what you showed us the reason. I'll be there on the 12th. <laughs> <laughs> but Bought I'll my be, ticket. <laughs> I'll be checking tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Well, perfect. Perfect. So it is. There, there's, uh, let's face it, you know, anybody know what palladium was yesterday? 27.40. It dropped $40. The day before it was 27.80. Platinum is less than 1000 So to save money, it's kind of what it is. I mean, it's, uh, uh, Paul's working, uh, I know, well, you know Paul. Uh, we're working on another one that's uh, just gold and platinum. And uh, so far, the porcelain I put on, it's been pretty good. But there again, it's gold and platinum, so a uh, little different. Uh, with this, I'm going to do it. I use a medium fine cross cut carbide. When I finish this, I'm using a Mitzi White Heatless. And the Mitzi White Heatless, not the gray. Let's see if we can see. That's the Mitzi White Heatless. All right? They're just the seven eights. They're not the gray ones. If you're using the gray, the gray has a, a bonder on there that will give you bubbles. Yes? So can we do bridges with You can do roundhouses. We actually do roundhouses with uh, SLM. We have it out here in uh, one of the pedestals. You can take a look at it. 
You can cast bridges. You can do anything. The key is getting the casting down. All right. There again, it's a hybrid. And as being a hybrid, you treat it a little differently. And it's getting used to it. How many have used the Noble Crown NF? A couple of you. All right. Did you have a hard time casting that when it came out? All right. This is not different. Instead of palladium, we got platinum. So it's a, it's a little bit different uh, material, but you basically you treat it like a non-precious. Um, can, can you cast it to a... Uh, um, UCLA, no. no. <laughs> How did I know that question was coming? All right, I'm going to say no, and here's the reason why. When you look at the gold melting range, most UCLA's are made out of 62 or 63 percent gold. It melts somewhere around 1,940 degrees. This stuff melts about 2,500 degrees. Now that being said, um, there was just a couple people in here from Canada that I know and uh, New York that all cast the UCLA's with no problem. I do not knock success. If it works, it works. But I'm not going to tell you to go out and do it and have you burn up a two to $300 uh, attachment because then you're going to want to throw heavy, sharp, pointed objects at me. You know, hey, you said it would work. Well, if you look at the melting range, it doesn't work. But a lot of labs are doing it right now, and so I can't uh, do it. If you were casting a plastic UCLA, I would say no problem. Do a two-stage burnout, and it turns out really good. If you're doing those, I put uh, either uh, um, on wax dental floss or kite string through the hole. And when I invest it, I get it right up to the top and I have it on the vibrator and I pull it out real slow, it pulls the bubbles out. Because over the years, I have had to drill too many of those out. Okay. Now, when you're going to finish this, you want to take and uh, finish in one direction. If you're using a stone, I start with the Mitzi White Heatless, and then I go over it with a medium fine, whatever shape, doesn't matter, but a medium fine cross-cut carbide burr. We get music next door too, so. Um, but when you, you finish it, and this basically is just to take the, the folds off. Um, a lot of people get concerned that it's too smooth it's, there is no me uh, mechanical bond with metal. It's all a chemical bond. So smoother the better. And you just make sure you have no folds in that. So stones and, and discs rub metal away. Carbides cut it away. Okay. So I'm going to do one real quick here. I got one started. Um, I'll finish that up as soon as I put my zip tie back on. So even with, uh, with this, I go down right to the margin. We finish these, if you were to send them in for an S, um, SLM coping, this is how you'd get it back. It's finished 90, 95%. With, uh, without it, if you were to order it unfinished, this is what you get back. Quite honestly, it's not worth the couple dollar difference uh, to do this. I mean, Eric uh, just came in and we started doing these when it first came out and I was finishing them and burning my fingers up. So um, I got somebody shaking their head. They've done them. 
But if you do this, even if you get one back that's rough, you want to go over it. I'm just going to do part of this so you can see what it takes. All right, I need a bottle of crazy glue to hold my hand down. All right, so, see, I gotta watch the screen in order to know where I'm at. This is a great camera. Uh, for training and what have you, I was just overseas and they had one that they do the training on. I mean, if you look at that, that's metal shavings on my thumbnail. Quite clear. All right, we're just gonna go over this real quick. I actually had the handpiece turned down for uh, finishing uh, zirconia, so we'll speed it up a little bit. Can everybody see how smooth that turns out? This is a weird uh, feeling not to be looking at what I'm doing in my hands. All right, now one thing here, if you look, See that little pit right here at the end of my fingernail? That was from where one of the supports are. If you get one of these on an SLM coping that comes back, it looks like porosity, it's not porosity. It's only where the, the support was. All you do with that is that. See, it's gone. Just finish it down, it's all virgin metal. The one thing with uh, the SLM units, any one that you get, it's 100% new alloy each and every time because the laser hits the powder and melts it. There's nothing else. So anytime that you do it, it's SLM units, it's always 100%, okay? Now I have, uh, this is actually fairly short. We only got about two minutes left. Uh, I have a video that I also uh, also made. It's on opaquing, which is one of the, the important parts of doing this. Uh, you scrub in the opaque, and I've explained this to a lot of people, and when you tell them that you scrub the opaque in, it doesn't quite compute. So I have a video that I made on opaquing, all right? And this is paste opaque. We go through the whole process of how to scrub it in. Okay? It will be on the website. Um, let's see, the boss is there, so I won't tell you now. I made the mistake of using my wrong glass slab. It says Shofu across it. <laughs> I have a new one that says Arjun. So it will have a new... Uh, um, a new video of 
same process, but I wanted to show you this because if you're working on the Platinum Plus, it's one of the important uh, things that you need to do, okay? If we could run that, I'd appreciate it. Here we are. So you can see I use a square tip brush and I put a little on the incisal edge and then I do little circles all the way down. Now years ago we used to, before paste opaque came out, we only had powder opaque. And there was a thing that it was called wetting the metal. And you'd paint the copings with either opaque liquid or distilled water, then opaque over it. And what that did is it helped pull the opaque into uh, the metal and it didn't dry as soon as it hit it. So it's very simple. You mask the metal out about 80% and you fire the first coat about 15 degrees hotter than normal. You can see it's just nice sleep. If you start at the incisal, do little circles down to the margin you don't get any opaque on the inside. If you get any opaque in the inside, I use Q-tips. One side's damp and one side's dry. I take the damp side, wipe it out, turn it over, and dry it. That stops from pulling the oxide up into the porcelain, which, there again, it will discolor it. Okay? I got a couple of minutes. Any quick questions? Not everybody, all right? <laughs> yes? What's that? Well, induction casting, now, that, that's a good question because there are some machines that work. The Comcast uh, doesn't. The SC does, all right? So the, the standard Comcast, uh, we're going uh, more testing on the SC. There's a couple labs are using it with success right now. Uh, the Bagel Nautilus works 100%. Uh, the, the old Hometica electric cast worked great. Um, the Mark uh, Modem 4 or Modem 5 and Modem 10s both work. You say the SE is yes or no? What's that? The SE is that yes or no? Yes. Um, to be 100%, we're, we have ours, we'll be testing it this next week or two uh, to make sure, and I can give you a definite answer. Um, for the ones that, uh, the temperature, now the problems with the, the Comcast is the temperature. Uh, the other ones usually just went up um, high enough. I mean, 100 degrees was their top temperature. I mean above what it takes to cast this. If you ran it up and held it, yes, it would work. The, the regular Comcast would work, but you'll burn it out pretty quick because you're running it at full uh, power the whole time. Okay? And you know, and on, on the Comcast, you have a barcode. And the higher you run it, the longer, the shorter your crucibles last. And those are expensive crucibles. Right, so the SE's uh, going to be running up about a thousand degrees hotter, so there shouldn't be any problems. Okay, there's uh, the the silver liner uh, induction casting works. Um, there's a couple guys in New Jersey that have them, and they work very well. Uh, there's certain ones that do, and uh, look at the temperature, look at their high temperature and what wattage they're doing. 2,500. Yeah. Up front here. You had another question. Same one? Okay. I can't see with the light. So, uh, any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.